So, what do you get when you mix a privileged trust fund baby with the gas machine known as Joe Biden, add a pinch of Ashley Madison, and wrap it all up in a taxpayer-funded paycheck? You get Fulton County, Georgia's District Attorney, Fannie Willis. Fannie is being accused of appointing her married boyfriend, Nathan Wade, as special prosecutor in the Donald Trump election interference trial. And yesterday was the first day of Fannie Willis' conduct hearing. And boy, does she have a lot to say. Oh, Fannie Willis is coming in swinging, ain't she? Um, did you listen to any of the testimony? I've been in my office pacing, ma'am. <laughs> Um, did you listen to any of the arguments? I did hear the, the arguments this morning. It's ridiculous to me that the, you lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. And I did listen to that argument. Um. You see how she just starts out? She, uh, you know, she came in a little hostile. She came in hot. She came in walking in hot. And now she's uh, implying that the person asking her questions is already a liar. Or I I assuming that she's a liar. Um, all right, so that was it, just the argument, no testimony. Right, I listened to the argument this morning where Adam Abadi, I thought, did an excellent job pointing out how dishonest you were with the court on Monday. And um, I'm actually surprised that the hearing continued. But since it did, here I am. You like how she already, it, it's a presumptuous, right? She's, she's interjecting as a prerequisite, um, trying to make sure that the court believes whether it's true or not you know you lied to me you're dishonest i don't even know why we're having this hearing because you were dishonest well prove that she was dishonest can you prove that she was dishonest or she did something liable or or fabricated something to harm your your reputation i mean we're here because you're probably dishonest we'll, we'll continue did you meet with Mr. Wade at all once the mo once the motion was filed did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you on January this first January motion but, yes I don't know if you could say talked about um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion so I don't know that it was a conversation as you know Mr. Wade is a southern gentleman I me mean, not so much okay but you notice how she's she's deflect she's, she's deflecting again. She wants to keep reiterating, you know, you were dishonest, you were dishonest. So this whole thing's a sham. And you notice how she was like, I wouldn't say it was a conversation, right? But she's basically admitting she did have a conversation about it, right? Let's see what she does next. But my question was, did you have a conversation with him? I didn't him? have a substantive conversation. You did not. I read this motion, skimmed it more of so, and. You notice how she put a caveat on that, a substance conversation. Nobody asked you if you had a substance conversation, um, you know, a meaningful conversation. Nobody asked that. Asked if you had a conversation. Simply a yes or a no. Um, I've probably said some choice things to him about some of the lies they were told. Okay. And but then printed in the media because, you know, we used to be in a day and time where you had 60 minutes and people did stories and they verified information um, and you had this great reporting. But it seems today that a lawyer writes a lie and then it's printed for all of the world to see. Oh, lady, get over it. 60 minutes telling the truth? You think they didn't lie? I mean, they lied and lied, unverified tales for years now, for decades. And what did anybody lie about? Did you have a sexual relationship with this person? I'm pretty sure you did. Are you saying that you didn't? Did you not appoint it after, you know, you you were already dating him? Did you not appoint after you started dating this man? What was the lie? Well, I just want to make sure that you answer the question I asked, though. So my question was... I'm going to ask Overruled, Mr. Abadi. Um, I told you what happened. I read the motion. I am sure I told him what my opinion of it is. Okay. And past that, we had no substantive conversation you did not again she's reiterating a substance conversation a meaningful conversation i'm having a problem saying substance because this lady has done made my brain hurt okay is there um, something you didn't understand no i just wanted to make sure that, that okay. you did not have a meeting with him in the conference room to discuss the motion right, next question no. so in the 
in the conference room of my office within this week, you produce some financial document. That financial document was given to me, something, and I'm not even sure if it was given it to him by me or Mr. Abadi gave it to me. Um, and I think he showed me a document in our conference room. But as far as a substantive conversation, I would not have, I don't believe I've had any conversation with him that is substantive related to this. Okay. Um, I have had conversations with him um, since you filed the motion, but they wouldn't be substantive to this. He sent me uh, very nice uh, sermons that, that have been done. And so we've had conversations about, did you listen to that sermon? You, you know, things of that nature. And I would say they were in relationship to this because I think he did it to be kind. Do you notice that she has some hostility towards an authority figure? Questioning her about her bad behavior. And she has an attitude. She automatically has this, this disposition of, you know, hatred towards anybody ever asking her for accountability. That's how it is. That's how the left is. You know, she's, her whole career is basically trying to hold people accountable for their actions while simultaneously not wanting to be held accountable for her action. Let's continue. Let's start back in 2019. Yep. So um, you and Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at a conference? That is correct. And I think in one of your motions you tried to implicate I slept with him at that conference, which I find to be extremely offensive. I stayed at that conference. Mr. Wade was my teacher. I did not meet him when he taught the class. I was standing outside talking to Lisa Reeves, who is a judge. Me and her were just having a conversation. Mr. Wade walks up. I think they hug each other. They have some brief conversation. She introduces us. Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to... This guy's about to object, but I, I want to object too. She's answering a question that wasn't asked. She just said, hey, you know, did you meet this person at this conference in 2019? She said yes, and then she continued to point out saying in your motion you were dishonest. Well, she, she let her get around to asking you whether you had sex with him at this conference first before you start interjecting with information nobody asked you for. We kind of thought that when you ask a question, you can answer the question, not a speech. So I object to the speech. I agree. I was able to explain my answers. I believe she's able to explain her answers. And that's, that's Ms. Merchant, that's okay. I can handle it. Ms. Willis, I'll ask you to just listen to the answer, or excuse me, the question, and keep the answers confined to the question as best you can. I think you'll have more than enough ample opportunity on uh, when the state is well, able to It's highly to offensive when someone lies on you, and it's highly offensive when they the try judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them, and I take exception to it. All right. Well, Ms. Willis, she'll be, have the opportunity to explain all of that. Yeah, it is It is hurtful when people lie on you, when they make things up, and they say all these kind of crazy things. Said Donald Trump every day since you filed charges against him? So again, my question was, you all met at that conference, though, right? We did. The meeting, okay. he, as I stated, he taught the class. I did not actually meet him when he taught the class. I walked out of the class, and I'm not sure if it was that exact class or we had went to lunch, but we were standing in the vestibule, like outside of the class. Me and Judge Reeves were having a conversation. She had worked at a law firm I worked at back in 1996. I, we're getting way afar. I mean, I don't mind her explaining her answers, but I literally just asked if they met at that conference. She's explaining how she met Mr. Wade, which was exactly the question asked by Ms. Merchant. These answers are more than appropriate. No, that wasn't her question. She just asked, did she meet him there? Did she, did she meet him in 2019 at this conference? She's continuing to go into things that have nothing to do. She's... That, that guy totally was wrong and lying, saying, hey, how did you meet him? Nobody asked how you met him, just asked you if you met him in 2019 at this conference. You see, this is what true obfuscation looks like. Muddy the waters, uh, make everybody else seem like they're the crazy ones, and then just kind of flood the zone with a whole bunch of information that don't mean shit. Miss um, Merchant, if you want more concise answers, perhaps you could lead the witness. Maybe she just wants an answer. The correct answer, the legitimate answer, not information to questions she didn't ask yet. Judge, um, isn't it true that you met Mr. Wade October 2019 at the judges to, conference? We haven't gotten to the point where Ms. Willis should be treated hostile in this situation. I think we well, have. I very Mr. much Lewis. want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. So you can clearly see she's a hostile witness. By her, her demeanor, by her body language, she, it, just the way and the tone she speaks. Right. It, it, then everybody I know 
people are going to leave messages and comments on this video stating, you know, uh, she's upset because people lied on her. Well, does that justify her, you know, in the, talking to people in that way in a courtroom, in a court hearing? Can you do that? No, they would hold you in contempt. But she gets special privileges. She is privileged. Your hostile Miss Willis would be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Miss Merchants. Thank Ms. Merchants' interests are, per are contra contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. Now you see how, how she gets mad when people make up things about her, but now she's saying that this person's questions are in contrary to democracy. Lady, you're there because you hired your married boyfriend who you were sleeping with for years now as the special counsel on Donald Trump, the former president of the United States uh, election fraud case. Obviously, you are not uh, scared to be dishonest. You are clearly a dishonest person, at least by omission. Because did you tell his wife that you were having sexual relations with him? Did you? Did you tell anybody at the office? No. So after, after that, you started dating shortly thereafter, correct? That's a lie. That's okay. one of your lies. Okay. Um, do you... You notice how she just clearly... She, she has no fear of coming out... And, and saying this to somebody asking her a question, that's just one of your lies. Imagine you being questioned in a courtroom and you coming out and yelling at the lawyer that way, you know, the prosecutor, the defendant's lawyer, whatever, and just, that's just one of your lies. The judge would clearly tell you to stop, and if you didn't stop, he'd hold you in contempt. I kind of blame the judge in this case. He seems to be playing favoritism. He initially paid for that. For Aruba, yes, ma'am. Okay. So... Let's talk about both of those. I know he initially paid for it. Did you pay him back? For the cruise and for Aruba. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. You would not go to the ATM. So strange how she's just like, no, lady. Like, like, why wouldn't I just have thousands of dollars just laying around, right? You know, that's not strange. Not that strange at all. Well, no, no, no. Look, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So my question. See, see, she doesn't want to be asked questions, right? Because this is her trial. Sort of. It's not technically a trial. It's basically a conduct hearing. It's an informational, you know, exam to see whether there's a conflict of interest or not. And um, just by her, her body language and the way she's speaking, you know, she's putting way too much emotion into this. Um, and she's making these overwhelming statements of fact instead of saying, you know, these people, you know, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, correct? But she's, she's acting as if the people that she's trying to prosecute are automatically guilty without even having an open mind of maybe she's not correct. Do you have any problem? I object to getting any personal records of mine. We're not dealing with privilege through a witness. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dealing with privilege. What um, we had offered to put them in camera for the court to review, and I just want to know if she has any That's problem. That's not something you deal with with a witness. And see, look. You notice she was like, I have a problem with you getting any personal records of mine. I think now's the time to get the personal records of her, right? That, that like, maybe there might be a reason to subpoena, subpoena her. Um, you, you're going to find out later on what I mean. I think it's time to look at her bank records. Where, um, when did he come to, I guess, the condo? I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. What condo, what apartment, I want to be clear. So, not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo, so I'm trying to use those terms. So, um, there's been more that, see, what you don't understand is because of this case, I got to move. And so, I... I need question, to, if you could ask a more precise question. Yes. She knows exactly what she's talking about. Um, again, here's a perfect example of obfuscation. She's, she's muddying the waters. It was like, hey, you know, you better be precise or... You know, I got you. I got the, a little loophole in how I'm speaking when she only had two places to live anyway, apparently. I mean, most people only have one, but she has two somehow. Uh, you know, Fulton County, Georgia must be paying good money, you know.
Please give me the time period. That we're Mr. Talking. Wade visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, and this is, it, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. Well, Mr. Sena, I thank you. We're going to take five minutes. This judge, uh, you know, uh, he should be ashamed of himself. He, he has lost control of his courtroom. Um, this witness, what we've seen in just a few of these clips, she is very hostile. She is very hard to question. She is constantly fighting over every single incident, even when it, there's no reason to. This lady was clearly asking her a simple, straightforward question about whether Nathan Wade, her married boyfriend, stayed at any time in her residence, at any resident. I mean, I don't understand. Like, what, what confusion is there? What loophole are you trying to get through there, fanny pack? I don't understand it. Did you and Mr. Wade go to New York? I've gone to New York. Um, I've gone to New York twice um, since I've been district attorney. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if it's two or three times. I went to do a domestic violence thing there for sure. And I was honored and I went to the Apollo there. Those are the only two trips that come to mind. I went. He was not with me. You also. Well, then wouldn't the answer just be simply no? Why did you have to use all that information? He asked, hey, did you ever go to New Did you two ever go to New York together? And she went on to this whole. This whole pantheon of just information that nobody asked for. Didn't ask, lady. Also said that he was a world traveler and had been on many of the continents. Have, been to six. Have you been on any of those continents with him? Um, Besides this one. Uh, where's Belize? What continent is that? I'm not being funny. I don't know. She, she, oh my God. She's a district attorney. You've been to Belize and you don't know what continent it is? I, it's so shocking how you could be this just disingenuous at all. Your entire existence in this courtroom was disingenuous. You should basically have disingenuous tattooed across your head, fanny pack. You're a moron if you don't realize. I think you're just, you know, you're BSing everybody. Uh, Let's say with the exception I've been to of the Belize with him. I've been to the Bahamas with him. I've been with Aruba with him. Don't embarrass me. I'm not sure what continents those are on. Whatever continents those are, that's where I've been. I'm sure if I gave it some thought, I would tell you. But whatever continents those are, that I've been to those locations, sir. It almost sounds like a brag, right? It almost seems like a humble brag. I've been here. I've been there. But there. Don't ask me what continent they're on. Oh, my God. An idiot like me has got to travel where you're stuck in your house not being able to afford your rent because Bidenomics. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Well, yes. Uh, but we're talking about, I'm very confused You've never now. given I... Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I, 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 what was she confused about? Have you ever paid him through Cash App? If you didn't, the answer is no. If you did, the answer is yes. What was she so confused about? There was nothing. She wasn't trying to trick her. She just asked her, hey, did you ever pay this person through Cash App? I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute. But I didn't give him money outside, uh, in a contract. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid. And... The county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. See, and then you see her attitude, right? Because she clearly knows what she means. The contract to be the special prosecutor in the Donald Trump case. She she appointed you. So, I mean, your money de technically comes from taxpayers. But if Fannie Willis didn't want you to be the special prosecutor, you wouldn't be the special prosecutor. They would clearly have gotten rid of you and you wouldn't have got paid by her own choice. That, that was paid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if we would go to dinner, let, him, let her finish her answers. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him <laughs> cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. 
Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably $2,500 and $1,000. I'm going to be honest with you. you. You just randomly handing people $2,500 or even $500. Why? You know what I mean? Like, what? why is all this money passing through y'all's hands like this without anybody asking questions? You know, is that normal? Do district attorneys usually hand their employees that much money behind the scenes as like a, a regular normal thing? I don't even know, like regular relationships. Do regular relationships do that? You never wrote them a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. So is that yes or no? I don't understand. Like, why would she, why is she able not to answer the questions correctly? Or, or, or the best of her ability, but she's able to obfuscate like this. I don't have checks. Well, does that that doesn't answer my the question. That doesn't answer the question. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question you was, telling me do you have I'm any proof? You? Is that what you're intimating right here? Wait, you're telling me the testimony of one witness is able to prove a fact? Well, that's true, but the testimony of one witness can also prove to something to be false, or that witness is wrong, or that witness is lying. So, you know, again, here's the obfuscation. It's like saying, well, the sun is red. Yes, sometimes the sun's red, but it's orange, too. Or it would be like somebody saying, the sky is gray. Yes, but the sky's also blue, so both of them can be true. So you saying that, hey, you know, the testimony of a single witness can prove something to be a fact is a true statement. But it can also mean that the person's lying. So it's just equally as possible. But I always have cash at the house. That has been, I don't know, all my life. If you're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you want to go. So I keep cash in my house. And I don't keep cash as good in my purse like I used to. Um, I, I don't go on many dates. But when you go on a date, you should have cash in your pocket. I mean, I can see why you don't go on many dates. With an attitude like this, I'm surprised uh, Nathan Wade actually wanted to hit that. Nathan Wake was probably just scared. He'd probably like, well, she can either make or break my career. I mean, it looks like you obviously made his career. But it kind of backfired because you probably ran your mouth. I mean, could you imagine? She's in this professional arena right now. She's in this professional setting of a courtroom. Basically being asked about her bad behavior. And she's acting like this. Could you imagine when, you know, she's, you know, in her head... She believes she's in charge? She's probably the most irritating, ignorant human being you've ever met in your life. She probably has this such, like, power vacuum, this Napoleon complex, that she is probably insufferable to deal with. I don't know how anybody could ever deal with her. She, she she's irritates the shit out of me just watching these clips. Let's get back into it. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? If it didn't come out of the bank? Cash is uh, fungible. We had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get fifty dollars, you throw it in there. When it's been my whole life, when I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Oh, oh, oh! Did she just admit? Did she just admit? Wait, did she just admit campaign fraud? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on here. Got rewind this. I had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get fifty dollars, you throw it in there. When it's been my whole life. When I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like to tell you Oh my god, she did just say that. She just said that she, her first campaign she drew a bunch of money out and kept that. Right? Like, you can't do that. You can't do that. Oh, my God. Lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. There's your campaign fraud. If she actually did that, she should be charged with campaign fraud like that.
let's continue. This this lady is is even more insufferable than I've ever seen. Oh, you. I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much today as I would normally have, but I'm building back up now. So you just put money in. It's a very good practice. I would advise it to all women. So you can't identify. Yeah, all women. All women just, you know, just take money from your campaigns or just take money generally and hide it. Hide it away. Just, you know, that's just for women. Men shouldn't do that. Men just go out and spend all your money. You know, you don't have to worry about none of that. Just go spend your money. By when you came into this cash or where the cash came from. I didn't say I couldn't identify it. No, nobody gives me anything. I am sure that the source of the money is always the work, sweat, and tears of me. What you asked me for is when did the money go in there? What I am trying to tell you is, so I got divorced in 2005 from my husband. Shocker. And no, 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 no. It's important. You said, where did the money come from? And I need to tell you where the money came from. And so for many, many years, I have kept money in my house. That money in my worst days has probably only been $500 or $1,000. At my best days, I've probably had $15,000 in my house. If you got $15,000 floating around, I want to let you know. The government wants to know that you have that much money just laying around. Was this already pre-tax money? Did you, when you cashed your check, did you just take some of the money and put it away? Cool. But was this money not taxed? Where did this money come from? Is there electronic, electronic digital tracing of this money? If not, I think the IRS needs to come knock at her door and find out where and how she got this money. Cash. At all times, there's going to be cash in my house. Or wherever I'm laying my head. The money that you paid, Mr. Wade, the cash in October of 2022, you do not know where that money came from. I do know where it came from. It came from my sweat and tears. This lady is insufferable. Is she not? Is she not insufferable? She, she just seems insufferable. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. She just seems so insufferable. You know which job it came from. Did it come from Fulton County or did it come from a private job? It came from. I don't, I'm not a, what are you talking about? So it could have come from a, a private job because before I was DA, I was in private practice. So I earned money during that time period that's probably in there. Good question is, why Why you act shocked when she asked you, did, did it come from Fulton County or was it from a private job? <gasps> well, really, and then she thought about it, right? She. So that just shows you how hostile she already, her automatic disposition is hostility towards anybody of any authority asking her a question. But so you have it. That was a quick recap of Fannie Willis's testimony in her conduct hearing. Um, there's going to be a day two, at least, of this. I believe her father is supposed to be testifying as, I guess, character witness. Maybe he has information. Maybe he doesn't. But as you can see, Fannie Willis herself is a very hostile human being. She is insufferable. And honestly, she may have just committed, admitted to committing campaign fraud in this hearing hopefully they follow follow up on this hopefully they they start asking questions about like hey fanny you just said you took a bunch of money from your campaign and you kept it um where's that money at um we're gonna follow along with this and if you enjoyed the content hit the like subscribe uh leave a comment down in the bottom hit the subscribe above my head uh i'm simple son and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.